Kalli TV7 vaatajad. Me ei oleme siin täna saatega küsimärk plus Rootsi TV7 studios. Meie teemaks on prohvetlik vaade. Minu nimi on Külvi Maisov ja minu on studios pastor Veiko Võsu. Kas sa tutvustaksid meile tänast külalist? Ja hea meelega. Meie saate külaliseks täna on teoloogia doktor Peter Nordberg, kes on täiesti oma kodumaal siin, võiks ütelda, kodu studios selles mõttes. Ja meil on, Peter, hea meel, et sa oled saanud meie saatesse tulla. Tänases saates me tahame küsida sinu käest väga mitmeid küsimusi, mis puudutavad meie kallist kodumaad Eestit, aga ka laiemalt meie naabreid, ka Rootsit, aga ka ülemaailmses mõistes just seda sama profetlikku vaadet. Ma tean, et on mitmeid asju, mida Jumal on sulle rääkinud ja kui me alustaksime Eesti maast. Thank you for having me on the show. I'm privileged to be together with you guys, first of all, and also to meet uh, the Estonian audience. It's a great privilege uh, to be, uh, hopefully, a blessing to you. Well, it started for me, actually, uh, with, with Estonia. It started with me that... Um, I had no word or something like that at all from the beginning, but I was working uh, in a ministry that had a, a rather large Bible school with several hundred students, and they were very appreciated by me. And especially there was this guy, uh, an Estonian guy in the in the Bible school, and he was very eager to get me over to Estonia. Uh, and I had never been there, uh, I mean, in ministry since before so he he was on me all the time and said you have to go to Estonia they need you you know and and so on so finally I I kind of budged in and say okay let's do a try for it and uh, and then we decided some dates and and um, uh, and um, I went over and I met these uh, pastors one of the pastors was uh, Mart uh, Metsala and another guy was uh, Taimur and a third was a pastor called Nikolai and I remember we had this dinner there and and um, they kind of uh, interrogated me <laughs> and and uh, and see what what kind of guy was this and then I I after the, the dinner they said uh, oh well you are approved now you can come to our churches and <laughs> preach <laughs> so that that's how it started actually and uh, but then when I went home then the Lord spoke to me uh, clearly and uh, uh, and said to me like this uh, he said basically said two things he said that i i am am uh, uh, assigning you to ra raise up the shields uh, raise up shields in estonia he said to me and but do not touch their authority because they the, that's not giving to to you but it is given to them and you are just going to kind of serve them to do their part so so this was very clear for me i mean this was a very clear statement from the lord and i felt both a can i say a a, a fear of of not to do uh, touching you know trying to get uh, do my own ministry my own stuff but also to specifically understood that i i was to be connected with with them some leaders and some churches that would be um, important for the things that God would do in Estonia. Uh, so, so he directed me like that, and I, I tried to stay on that course. Um, so, and that's the that, that's the thing with the, with the uh, the prophetic. Also, it's it's important because it's so as we spoke about last program. It's so connected to kind of a, a subjectivity. So, so it's important for you to not overstep, overdo it because you want to do more. You know, I I could say I, I want to do more. I could do this and I could do this and 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 but. Uh, that, that's that's a first basic rule in in prophet. Don't don't do more than you are told to do. <laughs> don't try to elaborate it too much, because then you're uh, you come into trouble soon. You know. Um, so what is what is the Lord doing right now? Now I I want to uh, I don't want to go too deep in it. It's uh, it, it's hard. I mean, in a sense, what we hear and what I think is bad actually for for the prophetic gift is when it's too general and too uh, uh, unspecific. 
uh, that it's you know sweeping over and saying now God comes with a wave of of wealth <laughs> or or prosperity over and then you you just uh, well does that mean every Christian or every you know what can you say oh of course some people will prosper <laughs> but will all prosper and how can we do? that that's too general to be a prophecy it can be an encouragement maybe but it's too so but what i sense that i can say that i believe that the lord has shown me is that there will be there will be a there is a testing of the body of christ in the western world and also especially in our part of the world and that testing in some way is um is connected to um to to the um, to faithfulness of the word of God, in a, in a, in a sense, and I I know this is a this can be called a general observation, but I think also in the prophetic ministry it is a, a prophecy is a, is a, a specifically designed to address a certain situation and give detailed more or less detailed information that encourages and strengthens people and reveal the heart of God in that situation. But that in the prophetic ministry, if I might so, you have di- different parts uh, of the prophetic ministry, I would say. Uh, and I don't know if we come into that now, but one of the parts anyway is is to try to interpret or understand what times we are in and how they are developing. So that that doesn't necessarily mean that I always prophesy and say the Lord will do this now. He says this now, but it makes me. Uh, it, it gives me the ability to, so to say, read the signs, as Jesus says, in in a special way. So, so that, so this is a part of a, I may say, uh, you know, obs- prophetic observation. Can I say that you can you can see it in a way developing? But for the last uh, five years, I've had this clear understanding um, that there will be a, a, a division of those who really wants to go with the word of God and be faithful to that. And those who are very, very influenced by the things going around in the around society. And I think that, uh, as I understand, it's like, you know, in the in the in the already in the garden where uh, the the some uh, the, the the snake said like this to Eve. But thus has God really said. And then those who says the word has said <laughs> so to say so right. that that i see clearly and that in that aspect i have also felt i have studied the latest time very much i've studied the book of revelations because uh, uh, in that book i see uh, an, an understanding of our own uh, time i, I felt a, a, can, can we say a a warning and an encouragement from the Holy Spirit that the body of Christ in the Western world, especially in our place, must be ready for for uh, for times that are uh, testing them or uh, coming with some kind of hardship. Uh, uh, I, I don't say now that everything will come like that, but I think that in a part this this uh, group of people that wants to stay focused on the word and true toward the word in 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 all different uh, spectra of that, they will now begin to uh, not only be spoken against, but will feel consequences for for their faithfulness to the wo- word, and the surrounding will press them. Uh, and and I see that in Revelations very much, where the book is really about that. Should I stay faithful to my commitment t- to Christ? Uh, you know, should I stay faithful to that? And I think that is one strand. Another strand is, I think that that the Lord has shown me at least, is that now is also a place where the Lord is actually calling us to a new place in Him. I I received this word very strongly, that that in in um, uh, Exodus uh, chapter, I think it's chapter thirty three, if I don't. Uh, remember it wrongly, where where Moses comes uh, has has this uh, meeting with God, and God says, "Actually, I'm I'm uh, move on with uh, with my children, move on with my my people." 
And uh, um, Moses says, but if you are not uh, going with us, uh, I don't want to go, he says. <laughs> and, then, uh, and, then he's, uh, uh, and then he's arguing with God a bit. And then God says to him, and this was the, actually the, the word uh, that I, I got strongly. He said, come, here is a place close to me. And, I, I, uh, and, and when he was invited to that place, he got a totally new revelation or understanding of who God was because he was invited to see the glory. Uh, you, you remember that, mm. uh, that, that instance. And that I feel that these two things, if I, I talk uh, generally, but if, uh, that I think is very important for us. First of all, uh, and I think those are uh, related to each other, that first of all, I believe that God is calling us really to a new place. And I'm not just saying that generally, I think that there is a new place in experiencing God that makes us strong and that makes us, uh, makes us, uh, uh, makes it possible for us to be uh, a blessing in these times. But secondly, I think we have to at, me, at least be prepared. I'm, I'm not painting the devil on the wall, but I'm saying we have to be prepared like because I've seen the same clouds in the spirit that John saw when he he was uh, uh, you know at Patmos he saw he wanted to prepare these churches in 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 minor Asia and say to them you know guys things are coming over the church and you uh, and God is kind of ha uh, dealing with the worldly powers he will protect you but you will have to you know be prepared and therefore he writes to these seven churches because he sees t uh, very clear flaws in their way of serving the lord and he he is uh, he is afraid he's uh, uh, he he feels that are they really prepared for the testing that is coming or will they will they uh, opt out of, of their faithfulness to God. And for him, it's very important, you know, that they be not conformed to the, to the things uh, around them, but that they stay true to the testimony of Jesus. So that's what he sees in the spirit. And for me, it, was, it became very clear uh, some, some years ago that this is in some way I, I need to begin to address this issue, uh, 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 trying to figure out what would be the, the ways to speak about that that encourages people but also prepares them prepares them for 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 um, a situation where their faith might be tested mm -hmm. uh, you know um, this doesn't mean though that the promises of God has stopped working <laughs> he still wants to bless us he still wants to do good things he still wants to prosper us and all those things but I I feel that there need, needs to be a, a stronger there's a time now really a time now it's always a time but it, I, I felt it that the Holy Spirit really emphasized this, but you have to pursue this new place in me. And that happens a lot through prayer, through worship, to seeking God in a, uh, in a more intense way. Uh, I mean, to, to do that, to, to, to maybe also to turn yourself to uh, the churches and individuals, turning themselves back to, to fasting again. Uh, fasting and praying, not because we, you know, many have a problem with fasting because they think that uh, they're earning something from God, but that's not at all. Fasting is to, uh, has nothing to do with getting God to do something, as I understand it, because it is finished in Christ. Mm -hmm. But what is hasty is to prepare me. I, I, you know, I be become more focused i become more you know uh, um, uh, strong in 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 the thing and more open and in, in attentive to to what god is doing so i i think that is something that that is important to to really address uh to people today you know what you have to come to this new place in, in the Lord, this deeper place in the Lord, where he will cover you, where you will be very assured and certain of his ways and his will for you and what his word says and what his standard is and all those things. You can't be f uh, floating on these things because they will, uh, he gave me another uh, um, uh, word for that also in this aspect and it was actually in, in Estonia. I received this word. I was, I was uh, preaching in a city called Paida and then I have some friends in the area and they asked me if they could take me out for lunch a day uh, when I was there. 
So I went with them and I was just uh, thinking I would go to a lunch uh, and just <laughs> talk with friends. But then I came in to this uh, uh, meeting hall and they said, okay, uh, now it's your turn. And then there were some people there, not many, but maybe 15 people. And they were waiting for me to speak. <laughs> I was totally unprepared. I I didn't know what, what uh, this was. Uh, uh, I mean, I just prepared for some fellowship. And then... I sat down and I said to her, give me a minute and I will ask the Lord yes. for what he is saying to you. And I think this also, if we take the context of the of the, the Estonian church now too, because he, he said it actually there. And, and uh, then he said to me, those who know their Lord will uh, will." be strong will will survive he says in daniel 11 i think mm-hmm. it is i don't exactly know the english translation but those who know their god they will, will make pre- great exploits yeah or they will prevail mm-hmm. i think mm-hmm. uh, i mean they will overcome these things okay so i understood and then i i actually spoke i want to say prophetically for n- near an hour after that that there will be nothing in our life, no, our dimension, our theology, our pr- precepts, our understanding, our connections, nothing will be able to kind of uh, make us overcome, but that we know right. the Lord. And this is in this uh, kind of... Uh, so I've received some of those things that I think is... I don't know exactly what that means. And as I said, I don't want to... Um, because I have, I don't really have revelation on exactly what will happen uh, or how things will turn out. Uh, but I have this uh, these words that the Holy Spirit has given me that there needs to be a deeper deeper um, uh, desire to us to really know the Lord and to not trust anything else uh, than, than his presence and his, his, uh, his uh, goodness, his, his, uh, uh, the fellowship with him, so to say, as individuals and as a church. And I think we will see many churches kind of, uh, and people falling away in a way because there there comes this kind of pressure or this kind of d- dividing power and that's actually i think is is from the lord to kind of uh, actually you know bring forth what he wants to see that that's that's i can say that that i can say with boldness but i leave uh, speculations uh, <laughs> beside Mul on küsimus, kui Eesti rahvas seda kuuleb ja kirikud seda kuulevad, siis kuidas seda käsitleda? Kas iga ühe enda roll on nüüd siit edasi Jumalalt instruktsiooni kuulata või on sinu endale andnud Jumal ka veel mingisuguseid spetsiisfiilisemaid võtmeid ja ühe sa juba nimetasid, et issanda tundmine saab olema üks võti. Et kuidas peaks sellise suure ja küllaltki tugeva profeteeringuga nüüd, kuidas seda käsitleda edasi? The first thing when something is uh, uh, not super specific is to, first of all, uh, actually check it uh, towards the word. But secondly, see if there are confirming voices saying uh, something about the same thing. Uh, you know, that is, and, and it's not so average that, that uh, you know, uh, anyone can say it at, at any time. Uh, but um, so that's the first thing I would say. Uh, and, and secondly, you check it against your own observations of what's happening around you and what you can can understand spiritually when you are praying for it and when you are kind of uh, uh, doing it. And then, then if you find this to be, you know, resonance with your own spirit, you have to make up a strategy how to do that. For example, you have to to say that um, say that okay, I, I need to pursue this new place in God, and it's not just an everything. It is a prophetic word, even if it's you know. So now I'm asking God, how will I do that? How will I actually uh, kind of do that? What, what's the strategy um, that is? And that, that comes as the second part. That can be, uh, as you said, I think that will be very much local and very much personal um, because uh, uh, when, it, when it comes to this overview perspective, so to say, because 
it can be very different from how a, a specific church, what they need to work with in accordance to what another. And one church is, or, or believer is very much on the way for some things. So, so uh, she or he needs to just correct some things or maybe develop something. Some other needs to really go through a repentance process to, you know, hasn't been attentive at all at the kingdom of God and, and those things. And, and when they hear this word that maybe things are coming i mean on a on a more uh, global state or more uh, you know uh, uh, surrounding state that that will actually test their faith they need to maybe look after see well if if this or this happens h- how would i you know so one uh, way of of doing this is of course to to uh, to try to understand what areas are or you know we testing and I, I should say like this I can say it it's it's pretty pretty um, obvious or or clear for us in Sweden there is a test that goes through the whole uh, uh, LGBT movement for example that's a that's that's a thing that separates you know <laughs> the, the church in in some way theologically and practically uh, something so i think that is a co- kind of a test that that goes through and then you have to maybe you have to if you're uncertain and don't want to know what you think then you, maybe your reaction would be that you really uh, put yourself into it and try to understand what the word of god is saying mm-hmm in in that as, aspects and what is clear from the word of god and what is not clear from the word of god and and, and so on so so that would be an approach that i would would say is good uh, for every kind of of a prophetic word even if it's specific it would be good to think through it and see you know how can i implement this is this really confirmed by other things that I heard, because if you hear, even if you hear, hear a specific prophecy about something, but it's the first time you hear it, you know, mm-hmm. you have to, in some way, search confirmation for it, because the word says that by, by two and three witnesses a thing will be resolved. So, with other words, uh, and he's not speaking specifically about prophecy there, but it's 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 clear that something needs to be repeated to be valid and and um, even we can see that even with Paul for example in um, in in Acts he gets this prophecy from a prophet called Agabus that says I see uh, I see uh, this one being strained by uh, uh, shackles and stuff on on this uh, pe- person uh, and and sent to Jerusalem it says and 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 of course, the, they are understanding the disciples around him are, are understanding this in a certain way, but Paul understands it in another way. But then Paul says this, he says, I don't know what is waiting for me, but I know that the Holy Spirit has promised me hardships in every city I go, he says. Yeah. So th- by then he, he had kind of a confirmation uh, from the Lord, maybe ha- he had more prophetic words, for example, that are not recorded. That is a, a clear, uh, you know, possibility. Or the Lord had spoken to him in some ways. So he had a had a dream or vision, or you know, he he just sensed this. But he said that it has been repeated <laughs> in in uh, in in city after city. So when it came to the interpretation of that part. You know, they who heard it there, they were, they said directly, like, we, well, this cannot be the will of God, you know. You shouldn't suffer. You should live and, you, you know, everything. Or this is a warning from the Holy Spirit. We have that recorded right. also in, in uh, Acts 21, I think it is. They, they all sense by the Spirit a warning for Paul to go there. But Paul did this at all understand it like that. So there's a posture we have that we check off with the confirmation, with re- repetition, with a with a certain way that we 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 handle this. Mm-hmm. And we also, when we get something in a, in a general way, we we don't take it for granted exactly how we are going to understand this. Uh, but we ask the Lord, well, does this apply to me? Does this apply to us? And in such a case, how does it apply, Lord? 
Do you understand? So, so it is not, we cannot, the responsibility for the word cannot, is not from that point from, on the prophet, so to say, yeah. or the one prophesying, but mm-hmm. on me. Not that he, is, uh, the, he or she that prophesied is irresponsible for what he said, but I mean that now how I will handle it or how we will work it out, so to say. It's, uh, it, it's another thing. But think about this. This was a rather specific a pro- prophetic word that yeah. Paul get in it where he would be be but it was average too because it was it's not it didn't tell how will it happen when will it happen by what means will it happen what will it mean for me you know is this a warning that I get uh, to say say you know stay away or go another route because at one instance we read that the spirit of Jesus hindered us from going to to this place you know so so there's a lot of aspects that forces us to kind of begin to work with the word we have. And and that's what I mean. If I say like this now, that you need to have a new place in, in the Lord. Otherwise, you will not be able to stand for... That's all general, but it's also specific in a sense. But then there comes the question... Is this applicable for for me or for us? And in what way is it? Uh, you know, we have to begin to pray for that. We begin to ask the Lord for the application of, and understanding of this this thing. And and the same was for for these uh, disciples around Paul then, but they got it wrong, of course, <laughs> because they let their worries and their concern and their love and their, you know, no one of them wanted Paul to be. Be, be you know bound and come into shackles and that often also is the question with us that we often blend in our emotions in these things and and therefore we take either a very bad route you know uh, and, uh, some have the emotions that are negative the more negative there the more the devil comes the closer is jesus <laughs> some feel and then we have the other camp that just sees uh, uh, prosperity and health and and success and 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 you know multiplications everywhere so probably some there there's a blend here paulus tegelikult räägib tihti peale kannatustest seoses ülestõusmisi väega Ja isegi selles olukorras, kus sa kirjeldasid see kinni sidumine Jerusalemas, tema nägi seda, et ta saab oma vendadele kuulutada. Et kui nüüd selline sõna on ka meie maale tulnud, et katsumused tulevad ja testimine tuleb, kas sa saaksid rääkida sellest ülestõusmis väest ja positiivsest küljest? Mida siis Jumal ütleb, et kui sa tuleb minu ligi, mis need tulemused Jumala rahvale on? So one of my, my more... Um... One of the things that has been guiding me as a, a word for for me the latest maybe 10 years is uh, a, a word in scripture that in from Isaiah 60 that says uh, rise up and uh, and shine because your light is coming and the darkness covers the earth but over you you know uh, the, the the glory of the lord is coming up and the people will work in your li- uh, walk in your light so for me that that was a, a and a, and i know this has always been a very nice and good work word for me so no question about it but at that time maybe 10 years ago or something like that the holy spirit began to speak that and say that to me and that references to to what you are saying now that it, it is exactly like that there is always when we are kind of i think that at times the lord kind of invites us to upgrade um in a sense because the darkness is more covering there is more confusion there is more you know things that are are invading our minds for 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 many different reasons and therefore god is calling us to this place and in this prophetic statement is rise up it means activate yourself it means stand up in what god has given you for some reason so so absolutely i believe but i can't say I can't say right now exactly how that will turn out or how that will become in in, in a certain way and I'm 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 a bit reluctant I I don't feel yet that I have how can I say I don't have the boldness yet to speak out too detailed for the body of Christ in whole of Estonia or whole of Sweden or something like that 
so I just want to explain that um, because when you do that, I think you have a totally other uh, level of accountability. And going back, we talked uh, yesterday or the other program about um, about the profits that profit side of about Trump becoming president again or something. They have walked out on a scene that's a national international scene, taking upon themselves to speak specifically according to a, a, a person or something. If you do something like that on that level with that specificity and then fail, I would say that that is really serious. I, I would say that that's you know that's that's actually what what uh, that I said Deuteronomy 18 said said you know uh, that those kind of prophets should die. <laughs> now I don't mean that these guys are going to die. Hallelujah, we're in a new covenant. <laughs> but 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 I'm saying it's it's still not it's still very serious. It's not to say oh okay ah but uh, we meant this instead. No, please, you said this. <laughs> you have th- this is serious stuff, you know, when you're doing these things. And, and because of that, I am I, I would say that if I would do such a thing, um, I would like to have very, 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 very great measure of certainty before I spoke that in that audience, so to say. So for me, it has worked more that that uh, you know, I get this interpretative patterns that makes me understand what like like John says in the beginning of Revelation says those who have ears mm. listen to what the spirit says so that I listen to them oh this is this is this is something the spirit emphasizes right now remember that the Lord will never say something that he hasn't is from the pattern of the world or the purpose of the, so it will always be that but remember also that the prophetic kind of uh, very much like for me for us actually starting the church that we did and did was connected to the lord speaking this word in us and said you have been sitting down doing stuff now i want you to array arise mm-hmm. and do this and this become the prophetic uh, you know uh, understanding for us we became assured that this is a time to move a time to do the stuff that we had in our heart and then god often uh, after that when we activated that the lord began to open doors for this and and you know we come in connection and a lot of stuff happened there but so so i think it's important for us to 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 be be you know careful that we don't step out on an arena that where we don't have substance yet. So for me, it's rather work like that. I get this, uh, you know, things that that kind of begins to turn my attention and my teaching to emphasize some things. And then when I meet individuals or churches, I, I met a pastor last night, for example, or had lunch with him, and I very clear, clearly saw some things in the spirit when it comes to their situation. They were very specific. You have to do like this and this and this. This is the time you are, this and that. And he said to me, oh, yes, I see it clearly now. I see it clearly now. <laughs> do you understand? So that's what I'm thinking. So... Um, so I'm. I would say I'm not. I'm not at least not ready. God has not uh, given me that assignment yet to to do this. And I would, um, you know, to to get this boldness and authority to speak so details over, over nations. But I have more had it in to speak to leaders, to speak to individual situations, churches, and then I listen to what the spirit says uh, when it comes to what is the what is the emphasis right now? What am I going to concentrate or focus on right now? Um, if you might, and I think that wisely that we all f- don't become so eager with the things that we step out of war, our authority and I think yeah. that when we do that we um, we kind of um, th- then we can mess up this gift and, and it, 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 it can be very despised uh, so but I don't say that God don't want me to do that or come to or other people I think they will I just think we have to trade um, tread carefully as you say yes. you know be careful with steps with thing and and, and sanction and see what 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 
how much substance do we have with that? And I think that's very important because the prophetic ministry is rather subjective. Kas sa profetina leiad ka seda, et sa saad tagasi sidet nendelt, kes su sõna vastu võtavad? Kui sa kohtud profet- pastoritega ja nendega räägid või jagad, kui tihti juhtub seda, et keegi ütleb, et jah, ma olen seda kuulnud ja võibolla toob isegi lisadetaile juurde. Et kas profet areneb selles? Yes, I would say it definitely happens again and again and that strengthens me in in saying that this, I believe that this is a word of God. Otherwise, I would say this is encouragement, this is a teaching. But if I, I, I would say that what I said before, the reiteration or the thing that um, confirmed several times, maybe with a different, uh, you know, viewpoint, but the same emphasis, you know. And I think that is an important thing, that, it's, that there's a, at times there is an emphasis on 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 the things that that God wants to do in a certain time and a certain uh, space and uh, uh, so absolutely that's one of the things that I'm listening into uh, I think that's a uh, uh, another pit fall for prophecy is then when you try to be too unique <laughs> I mean uh, uh, you mean you uh, or too novel uh, so that you think that um, I, because there's a real temptation. This gift is a very strong gift. So when you hit it, uh, when you hit with it, or, or when you come to the target, it re- is really helpful. I mean, it can really help a person. I've, I've, ha- I have tons and tons. I, I can truly say hundreds of thousands of of, of testimonies. Uh, without over exaggerating uh, that ha- but people have told me you told this to me 10 years ago well you said and it just came me it has helped me so much and these things now can come to, come to pass and, and so on I just want to thank you so much for and of course I don't uh, I don't um, remember those things but but uh, so so it has such a, a capacity when it's used the right way but it can also be extremely destructive if you become you know uh, uh, very uh, what do you say um, that you you are not uh, humble about it i don't find the right english word now but that doesn't matter okay you understand me it is i, I don't keep you know clean and pure in my <laughs> my devotion to use the gift for the edification of others but i dr- want to draw attention you know when someone comes and says like that to you you know right. whoo you get the bow so wow i got it right <laughs> wow i helped another person wow someone else has right. and it really happened you know mm-hmm. so from the beginning it it can give you this sense of importance and and significance into your life when when this is working and and that's that's the tricky thing you know you have to kind of guard your heart from that and 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 say yeah yeah uh, uh, yeah, that's good (laughs) but it has nothing to do with me uh, really as as a person or as a believer or as a follower of christ that's another separate thing this is a gift and it's clearly a gift from the holy spirit to to serve and minister to someone else or so, so to other people, and and so it has nothing to me if if uh, like Paul says, if you have received it as a gift, why do you brag about it like it wasn't? And and this is an important you know foundational point in when you enter into the prophetic realm because it has such capacity to to both um, encourage and build up and help people. And people can go from a place where God has spoken to them and they can be on the clouds. You know, they live in a total another world <laughs> because they just know that the Lord has spoken to them. And it is that there is no no feeling like that, is it? Yeah. You know, but on the other hand, it, it can be dangerous both for the one giving the prophecy and the one, uh, you know, receiving a prophecy. First of all, if you're receiving a prophecy that is wrong, it can be very destructive for you if it's not handled if it's handled in a bad way if it's handled in a good way it's not that much of a thing then you can just say okay sorry i missed it that happens and then you can move it away but if it's it's not said like that you know, the lord has said and it, uh, then then it can be destructive for you because it can put something over you and for the for the one prophesying of course 
you know, getting a reward from the gift. But you should not get the reward from the gift. You should re- get the reward from the presence of God. So that's where your reward is. So your reward in his, in his presence and the reward for the people is in the gift, not for you. Ma tahaksin tulla tagasi, Peeter, selle teema juurde, mis puudutab ikka Eestit. Ja ma ei tahaksin kuidagi rahule jätta sellega, et sa ütlesid, et sa ei taha olla väga spetsiifiline maade suhtes ja olukordade suhtes. Aga sõnastame siis selle küsimuse selliselt, et mis on see julgustus või mis on see osa, mida sa näed? Võibolla mitte siis sellises prohvetlikus kindlas võtmes, et mis saab olema või kuidas saab olema Eestis. Mida Jumal sulle on rääkinud või öelnud ja mis on see julgustus Eesti majaoks? Well, uh, I think that what I've seen the last... I've, I've been traveling to Estonia a little more than a decade, I think, uh, several times a year. And first of all, I have seen... Uh, Uh, that God has raised up some leaders and some churches that are really beginning to pick up some things. And and um, what I mean with that, that, that there is a, a greater awareness of the power of God and what he is able to do and, and all these things. So what I really see before me, and I, I don't know everything about everything in, in Estonia, but this is what I have seen. So what I've seen is that there are different gears that the Holy Spirit, uh, 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 that I work from, a, can I say that I work from them as a, as a uh, working description from the Lord? Can I say like that? So we have, uh, so as I see, we have had the first gear and the second gear that is laying a, a foundation of the, 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 the personal intimate relationship with God, believing him to be involved in my life, hungering and thirsting for him, moving up to the next level that is beginning to invite the presence and feel the power of Jesus, you know, in some way. Now, uh, uh, after this now, will become be some kind of a maturity in these, these uh, uh, places so, so that you begin to develop your understanding of the spiritual in a more bodily corporate way that it's not just oh hallelujah someone right. got healed oh we got a, we have a vis- visit from a, a a guy and he spoke something but it actually begins to begin a spiritual understanding on how to walk and release uh, this in 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 another level so to say so that that i have you know that i understand that's the next step i'm working for now with it. but of course there are some some you work with that you can work on uh, gear one and some on two and some on three so then i see after this i see another gear and and um, uh, th- that is coming and it, it, it is the establishment of uh, shall we say revival centers revival um, power that really touches uh, the people around in a greater with a greater influence and um, so but we haven't totally come to that um, some places are doing it and some places are not but I would see that these things are connected the intimate relationship you know the beginning to sense and, and be open to invite the power and presence of the, the spirit who's working and now to uh, uh, understanding of how, how to walk and how to ha- uh, manage the spiritual things in a deeper sense so that you really, you know, it's not just something that visits you and comes now and day and you speak for, or be open, but, but you actually understand how to work in the spiritual things. You know, how will we, as you said, those questions that we have talked about today, those questions sh- should be, you know, worked out so there's a substance and also an experience of those things so that we can really say well this is the way we are working it out and it's working and then the next thing comes that the power begins to be released in a in a greater way we have to remember that this is a kind of a pattern we see with, with jesus and his disciples in a sense too 
I haven't thought about this much, but I'm come to think about it now. But that he he kind of first uh, they come close to him and came to know him, and then they were introduced to the power, <laughs> you know, and that nothing was impossible for God. It it opened up, but then they began mm-hmm. to be trained and developed. In he sent them out, mm-hmm. and they tried to develop. And then when the Spirit came, you know, and acts and all these things, they began to touch the world in a stronger sense. And and I think there are other things there uh, too that I I'm, I'm not uh, you know I can't speak for today but there are, uh, the Lord shows uh, different uh, gears mm-hmm. but but I think for me in relationship for example to to you and some other people and um, and uh, it, that might be possible just that there are other ministers that goes to other churches uh, minister I don't know but for me I see very much that it is the gear three that I'm concentrating or now in some way in that aspect of developing the church so to say and at the same time you know this uh, this uh, thing is this stream is parallel that we have to see that we really are connected to the risen Lord Jesus mm-hmm. not to anything around him yes. and and to the things we have been through through so, no we have to have this place in him very strongly so so uh, so so i think that god is actually raising up uh, a lot of people in Estonia in different ways but in different ministers in different churches that now begin to understand paul says in uh, in first corinthians 12 1 he says brother uh, brethren i i don't want you to be ignorant about the spiritual gifts he said but actually in 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 greek it says pneumakos pneumatikos it means the spiritual I don't want you to be ignorant about the spiritual, mm. but because the spiritual is not some diffuse, uh, irrational, uh, you know, uh, unordered thing, uh, but it's just that the logic of the spiritual, if I might use that word, is different right. than uh, than the logic, and and um, uh, so it is not replacing what we have in the the scene, but it is. Um, complementing it is uh, you know the big vision of all of christianity is that heaven and earth will merge mm-hmm. that's the that's the thing it's not that we are uh, uh, going away to heaven it is that heaven is coming to us and heaven and earth becomes a, a, a kind of you know and that's always the kingdom's thing mm-hmm. so uh, you know so whatever we work with that's exactly what we work and i think that that is what we are talking about we are not being some crazy individuals with crazy thoughts but we're suddenly understanding this part of reality and how we will implement it get it to work you know in this other reality that we call the seen world praegu on kogudustes üsna selge lugu ja eriti kui sin viimase kahe kolme aasta jooksul vaadata kuidas on jooksnud üks üks selline lahutus nagu kogudustest läbi kus on osad inimesed väga selgelt need kes kes nii nagu sa nimetasid tõmbuvad Jeesuse ligidale kes klammerduvad püha vaimu külge teatud mõttes ja paluvad et Jumala vaim saaks neid kasutada ja siis on teised kes tõmbuvad nagu eemale ja ja teatud mõttes on ka hirmul on sellises sellises kaugelt vaataja isegi võib-olla täiesti ära kukkumise faasis. Mida sa ütleksid nendel inimestele, kes just nimelt on seal selles ära kukkumise kohas või, või läinud eemale ja vaatavad niimoodi kaugelt täna seda, mida Jumal tegelikult üle maailma teeb? I remember when I was, uh, was uh, young, I grew up in a Christian environment and uh, and it was very safe it was very nice it was um, um you know it protected me it gave me good uh, you know uh, environment and uh, uh, yeah it was safe you might say in many ways and made me feel good and be a, a good and stable um uh, citizen <laughs> and right. and uh, like that you know uh, and it gave me friends and fellowship and and moments i was kept away from the bad stuff right. in the world there were so many many good things but then when i was 17 i had this uh, encounter with jesus 
And I began to study his world very intently and I saw clearly from the beginning without now having all these frameworks, you know, of, of we should interpret it that way or that way. I, I, I encountered the Bible as it was and I saw directly that so much in the Bible was connected to a personal, uh, should we say, supernatural uh, uh, encounters with, with the Lord Jesus. And th- it seemed to me that the Spirit's work within the believer was just that, giving a, a, a powerful presence of God in the midst of life, in different situations that both made me uh, experience Him very closely, but also, you know, working out. So I began to pursue this, and as uh, Paul says, desire the spiritual things or spiritual giftings. I I began to decide that I didn't have, I didn't really have the experience around me because the church. I, I won't say that it didn't ex- exist in the church around me, but I would say that it wasn't practiced in a in a so. We never ha- prayed for healing for people like that. Maybe it happened like, you know, Lord, uh, you see this person and uh, you know that he he or she has this problem, help them. And if it's your will, please heal them and stuff like that. So so it was more than, and, and the things in the word that was about these things were more symbolically uh, translated uh, to us. So so I never, I never really, you know, so I, I I thought that this is a good, this is good, this is uh, safe. You know, I feel well and I'm kept from evil. But there was no nerve in it. <laughs> mm-hmm. There was not a s- excitement in it. it, it there, there was no no power in it to mm. change anything or anyone. At, uh, uh, and f- first and foremost, not me. I was not changed by that that power. But then, when I had this encounter with Jesus, I began to began to pursue these things from my heart open to it a lot of things began to happen in my life and all of a sudden there came in a fire and a presence and then of course I noticed by 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 the time that you know some things go wrong and but I always had this sense that I have to separate between you know uh, I have to understand that there's a mix in life and Jesus tells us this he says that if you if you think that you will come to paradise uh, already now, you're wrong. Yeah, and nothing about the Christian life will be be kind of easy in that right. way. It will be a mix. And he tells this parable, of course, in in Matthew 13, when he says that that the man went out and you know gave good seed in his field, but then during the night an enemy came and had you know weeds in it, and then they wake up the next morning and the servants to the Lord is saying, why, you know, there are weeds who has done that this is it you lord no i haven't done it but there was a thief he says an enemy that came and did it oh should we pull it up no it's not possible to pull it up right now <laughs> because then we will destroy the whole thing so so i would say to you that is afraid you don't need to be afraid jesus is saying that he has power to protect whatever god is given to you if you begin to trust him because this is a walk of trust this is a, a way, that, and I want to say, no powerful spiritual experience is given without a certain risk connected to it. So I think that Jesus said to Peter, uh, you know, or Peter said to Jesus first, if you, you are the one walking in water here, if it's you, Lord, tell me to come. Mm-hmm. Well, Peter could have drowned. <laughs> it was a storm, <laughs> you know, and he could have drowned in that moment. But for some reason, he, he just felt his whole, whole personality. He wanted to be with Jesus. And if Jesus experienced something, he wanted to experience the same thing. And I think that's the absolute right way to be a disciple it is if jesus is walking something i should walk in it doesn't mean that i am i am jesus it doesn't mean that i am on the, in the same place of jesus but it is it means that i am following him and jesus clearly says that my disciples will do what i do he says <laughs> they will they will follow me in right. this thing so so first of all i would say if you are fearful and if you are uh, hesitant and if you have seen all this yes I, I, I acknowledge that there is a risk. There is a risk to be hurt. There is a risk to be disappointed. There is a risk that things can go wrong. It is a risk. But the more we are fearful and not investigating and not trying to get into this area, this area to understand, that's what I told about the third gear the other moment here. 
Uh, the, the more we just keep away and say, no, 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 let's not get it into this. It's too messy. It's too, you, no, no, we shouldn't because people get disappointed if we do this and this. Yes, uh, it is true. But we have other tools in the body of Christ to correct these things. And to, But the problem is that when someone is doing this and do it destructively, we have so little knowledge, so little experience, so little in the maturity, so we cannot handle it uh, uh, in any other way than just close the door for it, because that's the only thing to keep the wolf outside, so to say, you know, because we have no other tools, we have no other understanding of it. So we, we just have to 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 uh, admit that there is a, a kind of a adventure to to uh, you know walk in this but the truth is that the life with Christ is not su- supposed to be risk free hurt free disappointment free you know uh, as you said earlier paul said that you know uh, uh, i'm through everything else away to know Christ and the power of his resurrection by being faithful to him in the suffering I have to go through. So Mm -hmm. Paul would have said, you know, Lord, this is really hurtful, these things I'm going through. So, But what you're doing is you're not only throwing away the suffering, so to say, part, but you're throwing away the resurrection part. So you will never know the power because you have effectively closed it out uh, closed out all the the possible power that can flow right. into your life lift you to ro- new realms give you an intensive experience of the living resurrected Jesus and most of all maybe you don't you will never have the experience of ministering in the holy spirit to someone else and see that enormous power and effect that God is causing through you being open to it. So so this uh, I would say that the the living uh, without this dimension is I mean not only half a Christian life is almost nothing a Christian life because the whole Christian life is about experience the spirit's work here and now not only inwardly in my heart but in a connection to other people you know and didn't Paul say to the Galatians I have often thought about that Galatians 3 you know he said he speaks to them and he says to them you know have you not seen this uh, the spirit working he asks them because uh, who have bewitched you have you not seen the spirit that work among you he says so what does it mean did i feel him as a feeling that i sense him somewhere in in the knee or something no no he meant that they have felt the presence of the 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 spirit in a tangible way that they all could be in in you know uh, um, they could all be in agreement that this was a supernatural you know, event of God coming among them. So then Paul says, how did you receive it? By keeping the law of Moses or by trusting in Christ, listening to the word of Christ and trusting that he is able to bring you to the place you need to bring. So this is an issue of trust. Do you really trust Jesus? Do you trust that he is more powerful than your circumstances, than your history, than your memories, than other people, than the things that hurt you and disappoint me? Is his power greater? Well, if you believe that the blood of Jesus is crying out louder than the blood of Abel, you should just begin down this path because Jesus will heal and help and, and, and cleanse you from everything that is, you know, if you just keep close to him. That's what I would say. <laughs> ja püha vaim on ka see, mille läbi Jeesus oma koguduse üles ehitab viimseks päeviks ja valmistab ette oma pruudi. Peter, me tahame sind väga tänada. See on olnud üks sügav sisse kastmine profetliku teemasse ja äh, sa oled seda väga lahkelt meiega jaganud. Ole väga õnnistatud. Teiega, kallid vaatajad, tahame nüüd hüvasti jätta ja ütelda aitäh, et meiega kaasa mõtlete ja loodame ka seda, et see saade tõepoolest ja need teemad on ka teie enda südames sellist uudisimu ja janu üles ehitanud nii profetliku kui kõikide teiste vaimuandide suhtes. Saagu issanda tahe meie keskel.
tehtyt näkemiseni. Armas televaattaja, see on suur unnistus, et meil on omakeelne telekanal, kus me võime rääkida Jumala suurtest asjadest. Kutsun sind üles toetama seda tööd. Sa võid helistada annetustelefonil 900-1770, millega annetad 10 eurot. Panga kaudu üle kannetehes saad valida endale just jõukohase toetussumma. Täpsema info leiad kodulehelt tv7.ee. Aitäh teile!